What if someone told you that the main purpose of blockchains isn't smart contracts, NFTs, or even DeFi, but simply trading? Well, that's exactly what the team behind Say believes. Say is very simple. Say is a layer one for trading. Um, practically speaking, it's like if you took Ethereum, Solana, you optimize every single part of the layer one for just one purpose, just the exchange of digital assets, and that's it. This straightforward vision from Say co-founder Jeff Feng might seem too simple at first, but as we're about to see, this laser focus on trading could be exactly what crypto needs right now. Today, we're looking at Say, particularly their recent V2 release that aims to fix a major problem in crypto, slow, expensive trading. And the way they're doing it? By creating what they call the first parallelized EVM. When you think about all successful applications in crypto, they by and large fall into two big buckets. The first is they're directly in exchange. Very obvious, it's Uniswap, OpenSea, Blur, Axie, Magic Eden. These are directly exchanges. Axie and Stepin, they might look like games, but the core thing you do in both those games is you exchange the digital assets. You exchange the NFTs. But before we get into what makes Say different, we need to understand why they believe trading is important and what problems they're trying to fix. Let's start with the current state of crypto trading. When you try to trade on Ethereum or any other popular blockchain, you'll quickly run into two big problems. It's slow and it's expensive. Jay Jog, Say's co-founder, breaks down these limitations. So throughput is the general idea for like how much work you're able to process per unit of time. And if you look at Ethereum L1, if you look at rollups that are built on top of Ethereum, they're not really able to get more than 50 transactions per second um, that they're able to process. Now, 50 transactions per second might sound like a lot, but it's not nearly enough for serious trading. To put this in perspective, traditional stock exchanges handle thousands of trades per second. This limitation leads to another problem, high gas fees. So what does this mean from the user experience and the developer experience? Well, from the user experience, this means that you have to pay ridiculous gas fees. Um, for example, I'm sure a lot of you have been doing stuff on Ethereum recently. If you're trying to do stuff on the L1, if it's 100 guay for uh, gas fees, like you're going to be spending a shitload of money on gas. These high fees aren't just annoying, they're actually keeping most people from using crypto at all. I mean, look, no one wants to pay that kind of gas. That ends up re resulting in most of the human population, honestly, just being excluded from participating on chain. And that's definitely not the world that we anticipate um, having happen on chain in the future. But it's not just users who suffer. These limitations also force developers to make compromises. Here's a perfect example. As a developer, if you're constrained to a 50 TPS environment, then it becomes much more difficult for you to build the kind of applications that you would see um, in Web2 or in traditional finance. And it forces you to make use of anti-patterns to be able to get stuff just working on the EVM. Um, one example of this would be automated market makers. Like automated market makers, they do not exist in traditional finance. And the reason that they've started to become so popular, the biggest reason that they're popular on chain is because they fit the limitations um, of what the EVM really allows you to do. Think about that for a second. Some of the most popular crypto products like Uniswap only exist because the current technology is too limited to do better. This is the problem Say is trying to solve. But to understand their solution, we first need to understand why they're so focused on trading in the first place. Here's Jeff Feng explaining their core belief. And we'll talk a bit about our thesis. Um, we only have one simple thesis. We believe that the fundamental use case of blockchains is the exchange of digital assets. That's it, period. There's so many other things uh, that people can talk about for blockchains, that people can get excited about. At the end of the day, the thing that matters the most is the exchange of digital assets. And you can see that across every big, important app in crypto today. At first, this might seem too simple, but look closer at any successful crypto project and you'll see trading at its core. Jeff breaks it down perfectly. Gaming. The largest applications have their own exchanges. It's the exchange of Axie's tokens. It's the exchange of Stepin's tokens. The biggest social apps all come down to the exchange of assets. For Stepin, you have to exchange the Stepin tokens, the Stepin NFTs. For NFTs, what's the main thing? 
that people do with NFTs? They exchange them on another exchange, except instead of Binance, instead of OKX, it's OpenSea and Magic Eden. And in DeFi, I think that's, that's very obvious. I don't need to touch on for that too much. Even apps that aren't directly about trading still depend on it. The second big bucket of successful, widely adopted applications is indirectly trading apps. MetaMask, Tether, USDC, Aave. They're not directly trading apps, but all of their demand organically still comes from trading. Tether and USDC, stable coins, they have deep product market fit as a trading pair. They are used to swap out of one token to another token. It's the main reason why stable coins are used. MetaMask, most of the users that go on MetaMask, they end up in the same locations. Uniswap and OpenSea or MetaMask swap. Jeff then makes an interesting comparison to traditional industries. And most industries are dominated by publishers. In gaming, those publishers are Activision, EA, Epic. If you and I wanted to create a brand new game, we'd go to Activision. They'd take 5% of the game revenues and they'd distribute it to all the GameStops, the Steams, and help distribute our game. If we created a brand new drug together, we'd need to go to Pfizer. They would help distribute our drug to all the hospitals and everywhere else. In music, if we created a brand new song, you'd have to go to Warner, you'd have to go to Spotify. They will help distribute that song. The same thing happens in crypto. Right now, Ethereum is crypto's biggest publisher, which is why most projects still build on it despite its problems. But Say believes they can offer something better, a chain built specifically for trading. And to do this, they're bringing some serious technical upgrades to the table. Let's look at how Say plans to make trading better starting with their biggest technical upgrade, parallelization. Jay Jog explains the current problem. So if you have 100 transactions that come in, you'll need to process every single one of them one by one. And this is super simple from an engineering standpoint to implement, but it's not performant. It's extremely inefficient and it does not take advantage of modern hardware. To help us understand this, Jay uses a simple comparison we can all relate to. Half of you are on your phones right now, those of you that are on your phones, these machines have multiple cores. They're able to process multiple word streams simultaneously. And if you have single-threaded execution environment, you're not really making the best use of the hardware that you have at your disposal. Think of it like this. Imagine if your phone could only run one app at a time. No multitasking, no background processes, nothing. That would be pretty inefficient, right? Well, that's basically how most blockchains work right now. Say wants to change this through parallelization. But if you are able to have the chain figure out what the dependencies are, that is a better end state to get to because it makes the developer experience much, much better. And that's exactly what we've decided to do with Say. We make use of optimistic parallelization. Here's how it works in simple terms. And a super high level idea here is you try to run things all in parallel initially, then there will be conflicts for transactions that are touching the same state, and then you rerun those. Um, the nice thing though, is when you start rerunning transactions for a second time onward, all of the state that they're touching has largely already been pulled into memory. So it ends up being much more performant because you don't really need to worry about um, needing to read from this. The results, according to Jay, Say is now... From a technical standpoint, Say V1 is seeing a sustained 390 millisecond time to finality. So it's the fastest chain out there, um, a magnitude faster even than chains like Solana. Uh, like in Solana's case, you might have 600 millisecond block times, but then blocks don't get finalized for until there's like multiple blocks being added. So in Solana's case, it might be like three to five second actual finality. But speed alone isn't enough. Developers need to be able to build on Say easily, which is why they're making some major upgrades with Say V2. Say V2 is bringing three major upgrades to the network. For Say V2, there's fundamentally three things that we're doing. Uh, the first is we're adding in EVM support. So this is going to be an interoperable EVM. Um, which will be able to communicate with the rest of the chain as it exists right now. Uh, the second thing that we're doing is we're going to be supporting optimistic parallelization. So what this means is that the chain will be able to figure out uh, how to parallelize transactions. Developers don't need to do anything. The so developers can just take something from Ethereum L1, deploy that onto Say, and it will just work. So it's a massive unlock for developers from the backwards compatibility standpoint. 
And the third thing is that we're also going to be improving the way that state access, state uh, commitment, and state storage works uh, with what we're calling SADB. Now, let's break down why these features matter. First, EVM support. This is crucial because... The biggest feedback that we've gotten from developers, though, is they want to have EVM support because all crypto native or almost all crypto native developers right now, um, they're EVM developers. So they have spent their entire crypto career building with the Ethereum virtual machine, and they understand all the quirks of how the EVM works. The second feature, optimistic parallelization, we've already discussed, but there's also SayDB, which solves another big problem. The more throughput you have, aka the more transactions that are processed, the more state that actually gets created. And this is something you then need to account for. And when you have more state, the result of that is it leads to, first of all, more state storage that you need to manage. Like if there's 10 terabytes of state, then most consumer hardware is not going to be able to like just automatically support that. You need to start upgrading your hardware. Their solution, a new database system that makes everything more efficient. And that ends up leading to a ton of unnecessary metadata that you're just tracking. When you have this, these three files that are stored on disk as part of this memory map file system, um, you're able to avoid all that extraneous metadata, which helps you get a 60% reduction in the state size, which is massive. Like that is a huge improvement on the amount of data um, that you actually need to persist. All of this runs on Say's twin turbo consensus, which delivers incredibly fast transaction times. And this allows us to get 390 millisecond time to finality, which makes it, I mean, currently it is the fastest chain that is out there on mainnet right now. And this will continue to be the case for Say V2. Um, and this has single slot finality with an internationally distributed validator set. These improvements aren't just technical upgrades, they make Say much more appealing to developers. Why should developers choose Say? The answer comes down to three things. Familiarity, simplicity, and support. Let's start with familiarity. Here's why Say made EVM compatibility a priority. So over the past couple of years, there's one thesis that we have started to develop, which is that the EVM is here to stay. 87% of crypto developers currently work on the EVM. So essentially everyone that's crypto native is an EVM developer. And if you basically ask them about moving to a new execution environment, let's say Cosm Wasm or any of these other execution environments, there's typically a lot of hesitation. The reason for this hesitation? Security. And this comes from two major components. The first is it's a pretty big security risk if you're comfortable with Solidity and you know the internals for how the EVM work, um, it's pretty risky to go to a new execution environment. Let's say write a smart contract in Rust. One small bug can result in your entire project getting drained. So it's super intimidating to go to a new execution environment. Say makes this transition easy. According to Jay's experience with early testers, the internal devnet was deployed back in uh, December, so around a month ago now. And we've already had several teams, external teams, that were able to like go through the end-to-end -end flow of deploying on Say. Um, I mean, in their case, it was really nice because there's full EVM bytecode compatibility, so they were able to seamlessly deploy it. All of the tooling worked as well um, to like whatever de developer tooling they wanted to use. Um, the user tooling, such as MetaMask, as well, like everything just worked. But Say isn't just offering technical tools; they're also providing financial support and. Our big call to action, the thing that we are most focused on, especially in a market like right now, is I think the most underrated part of the industry are failed founders. Founders that have taken their first leap, their first jump, and it didn't work out how they expected. The market was tough, they didn't raise as much money, they made classic mistakes. We want to give them a second chance. It's something that resonates a lot with me. Well, my first many, many companies did not do very well. And I'm excited about the trajectory of Say Labs, but I think every good founder deserves a second, a third chance. This commitment to supporting developers is backed by serious funding. I think the biggest thing would be the ecosystem fund. Um, so this was announced around a year ago. Um, there's a $120 million ecosystem uh, and liquidity fund that's helped, uh, that's like there to help grow anything that is building on Say. With these pieces in place, what's next for Say? Let's look at their roadmap. While the transcripts we've looked at discuss Say V2 as an upcoming upgrade, it actually went live on May 27, 2024. Let's look at what this means for Say's future. 
The V2 upgrade, which went live on May 27, 2024, has already brought significant changes to the network. So that brings us to the big vision. Where will Say end up in 10 years? If we're successful in solving this problem, it is the single most important problem in crypto. To be able to build an exchange, an application, and have the trading operate exactly like a centralized exchange. There's no difference, there's no trade-off. Today, the trade-off is too high. If you build a decentralized exchange today, you get all the benefits of decentralization, but the user experience is so, so bad. It is not even practical to think about. It. It's too big of a gap. Since the V2 launch, we've already seen this vision start to take shape. New protocols have emerged, including DragonSwap, Say's first EVM-compatible DEX, and Yay Finance, their first lending protocol. The upgrade has led to significant growth, with total value locked increasing by 271.6% in June 2024 alone. But Say isn't stopping there. Looking ahead, they're planning to launch what they call the Parallel Stack. This will let developers create their own Layer 2 networks on top of Say, all sharing the same fast, parallelized infrastructure. But perhaps most importantly, Say wants to become the go-to platform for all trading activities. But at the end of the day, what does the core founder and application care about? They care about users. They don't care about anything else. They just want users. They want to offer the best user experience. They want to keep those users and retain them. And that's exactly the easiest way to think about what Say is focused on. What's our big bet? Our bet is that the largest publisher in crypto and Web3 will be the destination for exchanging all digital assets because that's what this entire industry comes down to. To support this growth, Say launched two major grant initiatives in April 2024. A $10 million creator fund to support NFT and social content creators and an entrepreneur in residence program to help early stage projects get off the ground. They've also partnered with Gitcoin for a $250,000 crowdfunding round to support new developers. So what do you think? Will Say's laser focus on trading give them the edge they need in the competitive L1 space? We believe that their approach makes a lot of sense. Most successful crypto projects, whether they are NFTs, games, or DeFi protocols, ultimately come down to trading assets. And with V2 already showing promising results, Say might be on to something big here. But success isn't guaranteed. They'll need to convince developers to build on their chain instead of established chains like Ethereum. And they'll need to prove that their trading-first approach can deliver the user experience they've promised. Will parallelization and EVM compatibility be enough to make Say the go-to platform for trading? Or will other chains catch up with similar features? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.